So after a bit of thinking, I decided to come to the bike. And yes, you guys have heard me talk about the bike's games not being that great. Those are usually during the weekdays. It's the weekend. There's a poker tournament series going on right now. And our good friend Aaron is the poker room manager. So why not come here? At least the vibe is cool. Let's win some money. Well, today's session probably won't be a long one, but we're going to sure as hell make it a sweet one. But let's get ready to rumble. Shout out to the WWE or WWF if you guys happen to watch that. Anyways, it's very first hand. Early position makes it $35. There is no straddle on. We're playing 510. And I'm in for $3,000. $35 to go is worth the early position player makes it. I'm the cutoff with ace, eight of clubs. Feels like a decent hand to call with, so I do that. Small blind calls as well. And we're going off to a flop that comes 764 rainbow. With the action checked over to the initial razor, he actually ends up betting really big here for $75. Going about 75% of the pot here with the action on me, considering I do have a gut shot as well as some backdoor equity. I think it'd be a fool to fold here, so I go ahead and make the call. Surprisingly, the small blind calls as well. And we're going off to a turn card that comes at 10 of spades. Pretty good card, as you guys can see. We now pick up a double gutter. Any 9 and any 5 now give me a straight. This does introduce a backdoor flush draw as well. And with the action checking over to me, I think taking my A side of showdown has some merit. We don't want to bloat the size of the pot here, and we want to realize our equity. The last thing we want to do is bet here, get raised, and have to make a fold. Make sure to check this back, and we go off to a river card that comes a queen of clubs. So all the flush draws miss. Most of the flush draw, straight draw situations miss as well. And with the action over to the initial raiser, he decides to bet $200. This is pretty interesting for a couple of different reasons. I think it's going to be really hard for our opponent to ever have better than one pair on this river. And now the question becomes is, can he ever bet fold a hand like queen 10 or queen jack? There is a small chance that our opponent can be bluffing with a better hand. So instead of hero calling, I decided to do something a little different. I block ace queen here, which is definitely what our opponent can be betting for value on this river. And I also happen to block the straight that does come on the turn. I decided to throw out a raise for $700. First hand of the session, I promised myself I wouldn't be blasting off. The situation granted this for me. I think it'd be a really, really strong idea. And I look super strong here raising on this river. And he ends up making the fold. So nice hand there. Easy one to pick up. Happy we were, to, happy we were able to catch on that weakness on the river. The one thing I will say pretty quickly is that I never change seats unless I'm changing tables. Outside of the 1 and 9 seat, which are just not vlogger friendly, they're impossible to see flops, you can't see any of the action that's going on at the table. Outside of that, I never see change. Even if a so-called VIP or action player comes to the game, I think it's just poor etiquette. I'm sure this is up for debate in the comments section. Let me know what you guys think down below. But in my humble opinion, if you think you're better than somebody, it doesn't matter if you're in position or out of position. You're probably going to be plus EV either way. And I think I just think it's a bad look. Jumping from seat to seat, this is not musical chairs. But either way, this very next hand, I do something a little adventurous. I raise S ace 10 offsuit here from under the gun. A little adventurous because it's definitely not in the opening hand selection that we want to be raising under the gun, especially with the straddle on. But either way, I make it $60 to go. Plus one and the button make the call. We're going three ways off to the flop that gives us top pair here. There's a flush draw out there with the action on me. I decide to bet $90. I don't mind my bet too, too much here. I mean, we can get value from a ton of straight draws and flush draws. But at the end of the day, I think it probably plays best for us to have a check on this flop here with such a weak kicker. Either way, both opponents end up folding. Like I said, fruit for thought. Uh, take whatever it is, like I said earlier, with a grain of salt. But eh, it is what it is. Otherwise, with this specific hand... I think we could have played it a little differently by either not playing it in the first place or checking the flop here and playing a little bit more deceptively. In the following hand, there is an under the gun limp here. The next to act player is a pretty solid pro. He decides to race to $80 as an isolation. The button makes a cold call and I find myself in the small blind with an absolute ringer of a hand. I look down at big slick here. This is an obvious candidate to squeeze. So I go ahead and do just that. I make it $300 to go. My point here is very simple. I need to get as much money in the middle now as I can. We're out of position. The best thing we can do is probably try to get this heads up. That is going to be not the case as the player here from the big blind ends up jamming for less for $190. Our opponent who initially raised decides to call and the button calls as well. Four ways off to a flop that is not very interesting as it comes 884 rainbow. With the action checked over to the button player, he decides to throw out a bet for $300. Um, alarm bells might be going off for some people, but for me, it's just kind of a weird sizing here. 
Our opponent's betting like one-fourth the size of the pot. So I end up making the call here. The initial raiser folds, and we're going three ways off to a turn card. That doesn't change much as it comes a five of diamonds. Sure, this now introduces a backdoor flush draw. And for what it's worth, I actually don't have a diamond here. So if our opponent decides to double barrel with the hand that now picks up a flush draw, that is still feasible. Either way, I end up checking it over to my opponent who has somewhere in the neighborhood of like $800 to $1,000 behind. And he ends up betting once again for $400. This is now where the hand gets a little tricky. I don't know if it's better to fold here or to call or to raise all in. I really don't know. But the one thing in time is that I'm feeling that my opponent is fairly weak. Simple pot odds, we are getting like a billion to one at this point. Betting $400 into what feels like nearly $2,000 at this moment. I uh, just feel like it'd be a bad fold here. So I end up making the call. We're going off to a river card that is an absolute saving grace. It comes a king of clubs. Giving us effectively what feels like the nuts here. I do something that I just, I'm not too happy about looking back, obviously. I end up throwing out a bet of $50. I can tell you guys what I'm thinking in real time as I made a pretty nice little note section here. I'm pretty much thinking that my opponent can never have anything stronger than what I have, obviously. And the problem is this is a car that's significantly better for me than him. All of that being said, I just don't want to bet too big here. My opponent gets scared off and I lose value. I'd rather bet something ridiculous like 50 into 2,500 or whatever it is. And my opponent just doesn't know what to do and just blast the rest of his money in the middle. All of that being said, in hindsight, I think it's pretty simple. I think he has $400 behind. Don't need to get cheeky. Just put the money in. He's probably going to call given the pot odds. But obviously everything's clear in hindsight. I end up putting out a bet of $50. He calls instantly. I show instantly. He's really, really upset for obvious reasons, as it seems like I sucked out. To be fair, I, I will not be surprised, uh, considering what we've seen from our opponent today, if I actually had the best hand the entire way through. Long, long explanation, but a pretty crazy hand to go over. End up winning that one. Let's go. A few hands have gone on from the last one, and I mean a few hands, like literally just two hands, I think, have gone on beyond this point. There's a straddle on here. I'm under the gun with Ace King, Big Slick once again. Our card distribution is out of this world. We make it $60 to go. The button and the small blind make the call. And our opponent from the last hand is not having any of it. He decides to three bet here to $260 with the action back on me. He's playing about $1,300 or $1,200 behind, which is equivalent to less than 100 big blinds. So I don't think I can mess this hand up very much. I decide a four bet here, looking to get the money in the middle if it needs to. Otherwise, taking down what feels like $400 pre-flop for free without showdown is also a great idea to me. I end up making it $700 to go. Don't need to go too big here. I think the point is just to get stacks ready to go in the middle, or at least make it look like that. Both other just callers pre-flop make the fold, and the small blind decides to fold his hand as well. Happy to take that one down. And let's start over to a mid an update to see how we feel about this game. Right outside of the Live of the Bike room. Uh, quick restroom break, kind of like mid-session update. I don't see myself playing much longer. The game is pretty, pretty, pretty bad. So, I don't know, I guess today's gonna end up being quick session. Surprise, I thought with the Friday, the tournament series, the games would be good, but alas, not as good as what we've been playing with the private game and the home game. Mm, kind of getting spoiled. But either way, let's hop back into the session. Let's finish it up. This following hand takes place right as I come back from our mid-session update, so forgive me as uh, there's no video in this hand. I am not capable of bringing out my phone fast enough, but in this hand, I have ace-jack suited in the spade variety here. There is a straddle on. I'm on the button. I make it $60 to go. Our opponent from the straddle is size to three bed here to $220. I go ahead and make the call. I'm going off to a flop that comes five, four, three with two clubs and a spade. Our opponent decides to see bet for a small sizing of $150. I don't mind this at all. Let's me get to the next card pretty cheaply, but I do have two overs, which can be good sometimes on a backdoor flush run, a gut shot here. So I make the call and the turn card comes the five of diamonds. This ends up pairing the top card here when our opponent checks through. I'd imagine he'd be doing this with most of his range. So I'm going to go ahead and realize my equity, equity and check this back. And the river card comes a four of diamonds. The flush draws brick out, the straight draws brick out, and now we are left here with ace high. Even more interesting when the opponent decides to bet for $175. I think with this specific sizing, it's really weird for many reasons, but I just don't see a ton of value in his range. I think he can definitely have a hand like ace high, which we are chopping with, but it, I mean, 
if he's capable of going really thin here with like sevens or eights, which, you know, if you can, that's pretty solid. I just think that most of his value holdings would go for a little bit of a larger bet sizings to make it look a little bluffier, if that makes sense. Either way, I end up calling after a little bit of thinking our opponent slam dunk shows king 10 offsuit. I don't know if he thought that was good or he was just upset that he got caught in a bluff. It's really hard to tell, honestly. I show my hand and it is in fact good as ace high beats king high, at least in this version of poker. Taking down that pot feels pretty good. Things are getting very wacky in today's session. I'm in middle position with five, six of spades. I race a 60 as a straddle is on. Next to act makes a call and the small blind makes a call as well. We're going off to a flop that comes 984 rainbow. With the action checked over to me, I decided to go for a little bit of a bigger bet here for $100. Both players make the call and the turn card comes at jack of diamonds. Backdoor flush draw is now in effect here. When the action checked over to me, I think this is a reasonable card to double barrel. I'm going to have all the queen jacks here. I decided to double barrel here for $275. The opponent to my left is in what feels like a really, really tough spot. It seems like genuine indecision. But after quite a bit of thinking, he ends up deciding to putting more money in the middle. He ends up jamming all in for $1,075. The action back to the small blind. He goes deep into the tank before deciding to just call. With the action on me, with six high, I just am not getting the right price to draw here. So I make a pretty easy fold. The river card comes a seven of clubs here. It would have actually given us a straight. And at this point, our opponent on our left ends up saying, what the hell did you get us into? Well, I got us into nothing as I ended up getting out of the way. I don't know what you got yourself into, but either way, our opponent from the small blind ends up saying, I have the nuts. And he does, in fact, as he shows queen 10 offsuit. Good hand to you, sir. Moving on. As things continue to progress in this next hand, the straddle is on under the gun limps. Actions on me in the small blind with king nine offsuit. I decided to just call here. If I were to play this hand out of position in the worst position in poker, I think I should just be isolating the under the gun. I don't like limping ever. It's just not a part of my strategy. And uh, the old saying goes, never go broke in a limped pot. And it seems to hold true for the most part. Either way, the big blind limps, straddle checks his option, and the flop is okay as it comes ace nine for rainbow. With the action checked all the way through the turn card comes a four of clubs, bringing a backdoor flush draw. Action checks over to the straddle who bets $30. Only I make the call, and the river card comes a queen of clubs. With the action checked over to our opponent, he decides to bet $100, which is pretty meaty. The action's on me, and I go into the tank. I think it's really hard to find a bluff here. All the draws complete on the river, and it's just really hard to bluff on paired boards. I don't take any of my own advice. I end up throwing the call here as curiosity gets the best of me. Our opponent shows jack four offsuit, which is a churned trips there. Isolation is the only way that I think I can play it if I decide to put any money in the middle. And over that, whatever we ended up doing, okay, we got to the flop. But I think the best thing to do is just fold that river. If he has a bluff, you just got to tip your cap off and let him have the pot. Otherwise, just move on to the next hand. Moving on to the last hand of today's session. At this point, the video catches up here on the turn card. So we've got some catching up to do that happens pre-flop. At this point, the straddle has been taken off on the game. I'm on the button with king queen offsuit. I race at $30. Only the small blind calls and the flop comes out very reasonable as it comes queen nine nine with two clubs. We do in fact have a club in our hand, which is outstanding with the action checked over to me. I think I have a really, really easy seabed here for $25. A little worrisome when our opponent ends up raising our $25 bet to $100. Never fun playing raised pots on flops that are very dynamic, but the one thing I will say is I'm in position. I end up making the call here and the turn card comes out a five of diamonds. The opponent decides to throw out a bet of $200 at this point. I don't think I can ever fold. Our hand can still be good here. And we're going off to a river card that comes a four of clubs. At this point, I really feel this. I'm doing my best to work on catching light reads at the table. And I now look at my opponent trying to see if I can catch anything. Once again, as we saw earlier in that spot where I had 5-6, this is the same opponent. And I feel like I'm getting a very genuine form of indecision. I don't know whether that means good or bad. I don't know whether this guy has the nuts. Like I said, it, it's not always indecision that... He doesn't know whether he should bluff or not. It could just be, I have value and I don't know what to bet. Until he decides to bet $400. For that specific sizing, I don't think I can five and fold here. I do block flushes as I do have the king of clubs. The opponent announces ace high and flips over ace 10 with no club. 
adventurous bluff from our opponent. And luckily for him, he ran into the one person I was willing to call down on all streets. Fairly pretty, you know, it was an okay session for us. We played a little wonky in some spots, and I think we really, really knuckled down on some live reads and some other ones. Either way, happy with a couple hands, disappointed another hand, but that's going to bring an end to today's session. Let's show over to me in the parking lot to talk a little more about how today's session went. Alrighty, so is the camera a little, there's some stuff on the camera? Okay, hopefully not. The session ended up closing out a little earlier than anticipated. I talked briefly about it during the mid-session update, but yeah, just to kind of wrap that whole present, the game was pretty, pretty bad. I won't lie. So, um, yeah, I think it's late enough. I'm tired, so I thought that, you know what, we'll just wrap it up. It sucks that it's gonna cut the session short, but I think you guys will appreciate the news. We rented that game for $3,000, didn't need to add on, and I didn't even need to be in that much, considering it was a 510 for the first hour that we played and then the second hour that i played i was only here for about two hours um the straddle ended up getting on and then back off it was just a disaster the one thing about the bike and the reason i do ever come here is that the game is usually run by the players and the players put on a straddle and beyond that you can buy them for 3k which means you're in a little deeper but that was all pretty useless considering the straddle was off for most of the game i know most of the hands we played the straddle might have been might have been on but in real time that was only worth about like I said, an hour maybe. So I appreciate everybody for coming through and supporting. Profit of nearly 2K, we'll take that every time. Now we gotta get to the car and uh, head home. If you guys ever wanna play in my private game that I've been telling you about, like I said, make sure to Instagram, DM me. It's the only way we can play. Otherwise, stay happy, stay healthy, more importantly, run good at the tables, y'all. Deuces.